about it. Ian, man, what's going on, champ? What's going on? What's going on? How are you? Uh, I'm all right. Let me see some. So we're joined alongside Ian Green, up and coming contender. What's going on, champ? Uh, just to get some things clear, so you are training with Coach Terrific? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and how'd you get into the sport? When you get your start? I saw, I've been boxing since I was like 10 years old, since I was 10. Um, and T started me boxing, terrific. Back in Patterson, Ike and Randy's, him and my Uncle Wayne. So, uh, you know, um, I was with him for about like my first like 10 years of boxing. And then I left the gym and I went with someone else and I went back with him. Who'd you go with? Uh, terrific. No, no, no. You oh, said oh, 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 no. I was with the White Flemings, who's my trainer still. But um, I wanted them together. You know, I wanted to switch it up and have them both together. So I just added him to the team. I added T back to the team. For sure, man. So what do you have anything cooking? Anything on the line? Um, probably like April, May. I had suffered a cut in my last fight, um, like two weeks ago. So I got a. Uh, like I had to take some time off so I could heal. Yo, I wanted to ask, man. Um, I was I've seen you fight in person. Mm -hmm. I, I I I gotta ask, like, was it a bit uh discouraging you get the win against uh the top rank guy? Cause I was there for that on the on on the Michaela Mayer undercard. And oh. you know what I'm saying? He ain't fall since. They let him go. But yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's like nothing came for you. So it's like, is that a bit discouraging? You get your shot. You know what I'm saying? That was uh, your first scheduled eight round, if I'm not mistaken. They bring you in as the B side, big fight weekend. They bring you in to lose, but that wasn't the case. You upset the Apple card. They let their guy go, but they don't, you know, we don't hear nothing with you. Was, is that a bit discouraging for you? It put me, like, I was in. Like, cause I'm like a higher risk, lower world fighter, basically. But at the time, like, cause I think it, it brought me to 15 to two, and um, that was I think that was the third undefeated guy I fought. So, you know how the boxing is. If you got losses on your record, like they not really just promoters aren't too, um, what's the word I'm looking for? In a they rush not, to sign you. Exactly. So. I mean, it was supposed to be some talks after, but it wasn't. And um, I had to get, I had an injury for that fight. You know, it's crazy. I had an elbow injury, and my, my I had a show, I had a show, I had a uh, surgery, probably a week after schedule, a week after the fight. But I still was taking that fight because that was the best opportunity I had in a long time. So, yo, um, if I remember, if I remember correctly, I feel like. It was a, a fairly one-sided affair for you. I feel like, uh, if I remember correctly, it was a rather easy fight for you. Um, did you feel I, that way? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I like it was. I knew it was gonna be easy. Like I, like people, like they tend in boxing, they judge you off your losses, but they don't. They just look at what happens in the ring and they think that's you, but they don't know it's more to boxing than just what happens in the ring. It's a lot that goes outside the ring, you know. And it was my job for the rest of my career to make sure that the things outside the ring don't affect me when it goes inside, the, when I'm inside that ring. So now that I took care of that, ain't nobody beating me. So what, what did happen in the past? Um, just a lot of, like, I, 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 I suffered with, like, a lot of, uh, well, like, back then I was suffering with a lot of mental issues. Um... You know, uh, grief. You uh, lost someone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I had back. So, to just to tell y'all a little bit about myself, I turned pro in 2014. You know, things was going things was going pretty good in my pro career. But uh, like I said, I suffered losses like basically back to back, like 2016 and 2017. And when I suffered them losses. It uh it, it kind of showed me like it's a dark side to boxing. Like when you got the machine behind you, you got people investing in you, things is great. You know, things is things is good. But once you take that L, 
it, it flips. Like people, people, you see true colors. People change. So when I had when I had uh, suffered my second loss, like it, it it showed me a lot. So to go back to your question, um, like I was having like a lot of family issues. I was having issues with my my coaches. It was a lot. I had injuries. And I was still taking the fights. And, and you know, when, when it's all said and done, though, I, I fixed the problem. So that's not happening anymore. No, I mean, look, shit happens. And obviously, uh, since your last loss, you've been uh, definitely on a winning streak. Five fights since your last. I, I wanna, five wins since your last defeat. Let me go to that first one because I know Devon Lee. I got I to gotta know what, I mean, I would expect. Not to say Devon is a bum. That's not what I'm saying. I know how tough he is. I've watched him spar Daniel Jacobs, Nikita Abba Ali. You know, he's he's a New York City vet. But if you the goods, you're supposed to beat I, Devon Lee. So I need to know what happened. I shouldn't be losing to no guy like Devon Lee. Like, just being big-headed also, being big-headed, seeing him, not thinking much of him. I shouldn't be I – don't, I don't know if any of y'all watched that fight, but I was dead tired in, like, the third round. I should have, as a professional, you shouldn't be getting tired in the third round. Like, we professionals, you know, so. That so was. You didn't that train? Was, I trained, but I ain't trained how I was supposed to train, you know. But I, Who was I the trainer at the time? Um, My trainer now, Dwight. But okay. it's the only control of what I do in the gym. You know, you got to do things outside the gym. You got to make sure you run. You got to. You got to eat good. It's a lot. But I don't really want to make excuses. He was the better man that day. So, you know how that goes. Was he a Luther Bella fighter at the time? Because I see that fight took place in BB Kings. I don't know. I have no idea. Did you fear you got fair treatment? Because, again, being as though I'm pretty sure he was a Luther Bella fighter, I know that's a Luther Bella venue. Do you feel like you got fair treatment and he really beat you? Um... I, I, I feel like the fight was close, but at the end of the day, I still like look at it as a loss because I should, like I said, I shouldn't be getting tired. Mm -hmm. Damn, you know, like that's we we pros. So, so and then what? So for now, I was gonna, I I I, I want to know, like now you you suffered your two losses, but you won a five fight winning streak. You've uh, mm -hmm. defeated four undefeated guys. So you a dangerous B side. You a dangerous opponent to you know what I'm saying clearly because you beating um undefeated guys, you getting guys cut from their promotional contracts. Uh how can you secure yourself a uh, you know, the fight that you're looking for? Because like you said, you are gonna be a a, a high risk, low reward kind of fighter. All right, so like I look at it like this, like like back then. When I when I did lose, like I was, it's a difference. Like I was fighting for me, like you know, like I was just fighting for me. When I took that, that if you look on my box rack, I took a three year layoff after my my loss from 2017 to 2020. But in that three year layoff, I wasn't like I was getting the worst offers ever. Like, um, fight go to Canada, fight this guy in a week. Like you know, like. Like undefeated guys, like offers like that, and I wasn't. I Let wasn't. Let me ask going, you: like, In those three years, did you have management representation? Yeah, I, I had a manager. I had a manager. Um, and like I said, like me and my man, me and my pat, my manager back in the day, we got a good relationship. I have nothing against him, but you know, when you lose to guys you shouldn't lose to, you kind of second guess your investment. So he wasn't eager to like get me like like buy me fights to get me back up and running he was just basically offering me what they were sending him like the week notice tough fight and i wasn't like i wasn't taking them because i still believed in myself i still believed i'd become world champion and i wasn't flying out the country on a b-side to fight a guy in their country so like it was like tug of war for three years and like I like going back to what I said. Like when I said I was fighting for back in the day, I was fighting for me. Now it's a huge difference. Like now, you know, I got children. You know, now in that in that three years, um, like I said, I have I had lost my dad like to cancer before uh, back when I before before uh, before I lost, but I, I lost my condolences, dad. man. I lost my I lost my pops to cancer, right? And 
you know, like I had, I always had my mom, my mom, like she, she had my back. She had my back or whatever the case may be. And she kind of, she made it easy for me. Like it was, it was, it was tough to go through, but you know, when you got your mom on your side, it's, it's a lot easier. So I had my mom, you know, like she, 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 she always believed in me. Even after I, I lost, she was always by my side. Like, yo son, you still going to be champ. I really believe in you. So just having her there and like, like I said, like, when I, me and her like watch, we, we watched him take his last breath. You feel me? So like that in itself was, was kind of like, uh, it was tough, but like I said, I always had her. She was, she was by my side 24 seven every day. And she always encouraged me even throughout the layoff. She was encouraging me to stay in the gym and all of that. Yo, I, I, and that's something I wanted to ask you about because you take this layoff, right? Uh -huh. And about two and a half years into this layoff, we get this fucking thing that shuts down the, the world. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody know what the fuck was going to happen next. At this point, you two and a half years into your layoff. So what the fuck is going through your mind? And, 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 and how are you getting yourself up to, to, to keep training during this time period? Like, what was the pandemic like for you? Because I, I'm sure it could have been a bit disappointing, a bit, uh, uh, maybe you losing motivation. You get what I'm saying? So what was that like for you? Because like I said, you was already two and a half years in at that point. You, you know what I'm saying? You already into a bit. You think you about to get a parole date and then that shit don't ever come. I ain't, I'm not gonna lie. I thought my I thought my career was over. I I, I really. Th so wait, it ain't it ain't over. So um, two years into that bit, I get a call from a detective, like basically telling me like, "Yo, uh, your mom has your mom died. Like it was a something tragic that happened to her. Just come pick up her belongings." And like that right there. It, this was like, during it, the pandemic? This was right before the Where pandemic. Where if a mouse could so, change the world? Sorry about that. So pretty much in the span of, of three, four years, you lost both your parents. Yeah, yeah. So and this and this is and this is in the middle like of my boxing career of being on hold and then I lost like my, my number one supporter, the black the only one that really believed in me. I felt like my management team believed in me. And I had, it was just a lot going on, so I kind of thought it was over. Like I, I, I ain't even, I, ain't, I wasn't beat for it no more. So I, I got real depressed. I, I got up to like two hundred twenty pounds. Damn. Like, yeah, yeah, I was, I was big, and it was, like, I was ready to pack it up. I ain't gonna lie, but son just, I don't know. Son just kept me going to. I don't. You, you know what Garrett? You from Jersey? You know what Garrett Mountain is? Yeah, yeah, son, yeah. I ran up there. I ran up there with the team. Oh, all right. Okay, cool. So, son just kept me running here and there, and son just kept me in a gym. Alone? Like, you was going to Gary Mountain alone? Yeah, I go to Yeah. Okay. And um, I was in the gym, though, but I wasn't training hard, but son just kept me in the gym, kept me going, kept me going. And I, and I always heard my mom's voice in the back of my head, like, yo, son, you'll never lose again. So, yo, shout out to Cornflake. That's like my brother from another mother, mother Tommy Lamana. Yeah, Thomas yes, Lamana. We know him well. Yes, during, during the pandemic, he was doing fights in Mexico. So he was doing his fights in Mexico. So I hit my manager. I'm like, yo, look, I'll take these fights that you offer me, but it's been three years. Now it's three years. I'm like, yo, just let me get my feet wet. Like, let me get my feet back wet. Let me, I'm ready to get back into it, like 100% for real now. Like, just, like, let me get my feet back wet. No lie. He basically was like, Nah, like I ain't investing in no more money, like you know. So that right there told me, like you know what, I got, I gotta believe in myself. I gotta take my career in my own hands. So mm. I was, my, I became my own manager, my own promoter. I paid Tommy to get on the card. I paid my opponent. I paid for his flight and hotel, and I went to Mexico, like by myself with just just my friend to start my go on my box track you can see after my loss three years later i'm in mexico and i fall in the bar just to get back on box track just to get the stuff flowing again so i can yeah. get some fun to take a b-side fight so i do that and then one thing led to another and so now like
I got to ask. I got to ask. I'm sorry because we talk about these things all the time. Uh, if you don't mind sharing with us, how much did you spend on that fight in Mexico? Because obviously you paying slot fee, you paying your way down there, you paying travel, your, your opponent, medicals. Yeah. So, so well, how how much that shit hit you for one fight? Mexico is kind of cheaper than the U.S. Like, but it was three hundred or three thousand. Thousand, like three k, twenty seven, like twenty seven to three thousand. All in though, right? Like expenses, okay. medicals, hotel, and everything. Yeah, everything. Yeah, cool. Yeah. And so, you had to get this up yourself. Yeah, I, like, yeah. So I, I already had it, but I went to my manager first. Like, you my manager, you know? And like I said, I don't got nothing against him. Like, you know, we got a good relationship today. Um, I, I thank him for everything he's done for me, but he was like, he, it was a catch to it. He basically was like, nah, he not gonna, he ain't doing it. So when so, he says I'm not doing it, is that your release? Or are you still with this dude while no, you... We had like a year left. It, it basically, he wanted an uh, extension. He wanted an extension in order for him to like do it. Mm -hmm. So I was, in my mind, I'm like, it, it ain't really worth it. So I just did it myself. So I went down there by myself. Like I had my trainer, I had another trainer at the time. He he was basically um, treating me like everybody else was treating me. Like I like it was over. So he didn't even come. So what? me, yes, me. Look, like I got like a. A real comeback story. But wait, but wait. When you say he ain't even come, you already knew beforehand, right? Because I'm, I'm assuming he wanted you to pay his travel and expenses. No, 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 no. He just, he, he couldn't make it. Like okay. he couldn't make it. it. Was but he couldn't make it. But he ain't come. But I still was going. Like I gotta, I gotta get my shit back up and running. I've been boxing since I was ten. I put a lot of years into this shit. So I ain't going. Like just give up. Like just stop because everybody else telling me it's over. Nah. I heard that voice in my head. I heard my mom's voice in my head, like, you'll never lose again, son. Like, you could do it. So I went out there and um got the fight. Then I started getting calls. One thing led to another. I got an opportunity to fight in Dubai. I did my thing out there. How'd Next that year? opportunity come about? Because right now, obviously, the Middle East is hot. Uh, so, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, that story probably is interesting to our, our, our audience. Well, it's it was really a. I knew somebody. Um, this the owner of the gym that I was training in. He saw me training there for damn near two and a half years without getting a fight, and he also saw like what I was going through and stuff like that. And he knew somebody that was he knew he knew a promoter out there that was that was having fights. And um, now mind you, if you look at my box rec, the Dubai fight don't come till about seven months after the Mexico fight. So after I fought in Mexico. It's like, all right, now what? So it's like, I'm trying to save up money to fight in America because the American fights, they, they go for like seven, eight thousand. So I'm, I'm in the midst of doing that. Seven, eight, and because you wanted what? An eight or a six, like an eight round, I'm assuming. Because six, six, that don't that don't sound right for a six unless you're getting a high nah, level opponent. Eight, no, an eight rounder and the opponents, they be wanting like four or five thousand. For sure. So, and, and at this time, you got to think I beat. At at this time, I beat uh, two undefeated people, so they wasn't trying to take no no Mexico money. Mm -hmm. So I'm saving up for that. While I'm saving up for that, the owner of the gym basically presented me with the opportunity to go to Dubai, or whatever. So went there, did my thing, um, and like I said, another like like one. It's like a snowball effect. Now, you know, I'm on box track. I'm active. Boom, Bob Barham, top rank. They call me. To fight their guy, and like, and they gave me time. It wasn't like I, I respect. I respect Tyler for taking the fight. They gave me uh like six, seven weeks. And shout out to Tommy because he has something to do with that. Also, I think he he could real cool with Brad Goodman, and Brad Goodman was looking for somebody to fight. Tyler. When you say Tommy, or you do you Lamana. mean Thomas Lamana? Lamana, Lamana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, He's I just late. never heard him any anybody call him Tommy. Yeah, yeah, all right, all right yeah. So he um. He has something to do with that too. Uh, they called me. They like, yo, you want to fight him? Seven weeks, blah blah blah. I'm like, yeah, I'm with it. Like, I'm ready. And I train right, for it. Seems it. like you retired, dude. He's with David McWater, but he ain't get a fight since you fought him. Yeah, it's I like, it's lie. like you retired him. And I, if you look on a box right, this is the the 15 and no kid, Andy. He ain't fight since, and it's been like that was like in 2017. Mejia.
Yeah, yeah, he was good. He was he, that was a tough fight. But um, well, like I said, one thing led to another, and I got that the top rank fight, and I show like I show the world like I'm really like I'm him. I'm not no, I'm not an opponent. I'm not, I'm not a bum. Like I just was dealing with a lot like back then, but it's I'm 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 back and I'm better. Period. And like like I said, if I could like go through what I've been through outside the ring and still be good, like like be where I'm at today, then no man could beat me. Period. Like I'm not letting none of the stuff that used to affect me back then affect me now. So. So after I, that win with uh. Tyler, I believe, yes. Then you had two more fights, but those were only one fight per year. So what happened so, there? So like I said, the Tyler fight put me in a it put me in a high risk, low reward. Cause like I still don't got a promoter. I still don't like I'm now it's like, should we fight this kid? He I don't like so it's it's like that. So So you ain't getting no uh, offers or you getting bullshit offers? And one week notice offers like any look, opponents that you once they, anybody you remember they offered you on one week's notice. Um, I know they they offered me they offered me ammo like probably it was like like two and a half. Three Damn, weeks. ammo yeah. from Matchroom. Yeah, at fifty four or sixty. At sixty. Okay. That's the fight I, I want. I will take that fight. Any, so any. just to be clear, they offered you ammo, and who do you end up fighting? Was it Mama's um, boy? Because um, I feel like Cordell. Mama's boy. Cordell. Oh, he fought Cordell Booker. Yeah, he, yeah, Cordell. Yeah. That's my so, guy. You know, I always talk about him and I always yo, forget his name. That, that was a very, I remember that fight. That was on the Haney JoJo on the card. That was a, a interesting stoppage. I'm not going to lie to you. Why so? I was there, but I don't remember it. I remember it being an interesting stoppage. Like, maybe. I feel like I remember Ammo. <laughs> Really, like, yeah, Cordell got hurt. What didn't he get hurt? I feel like, I feel like I, he got I, got caught cold. That's what yeah. I think. Mm. I think he was cold. Um, he and your 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 manager Paul, or he's not with you no All more. Right. So now, like my manager from the past, we not he's not with me no more. The contract expired. I didn't sign an extension to do those Mexico fights. So just to be clear, though. The manager you're speaking of is Paul. No, no. Okay, that's your new manager. Yeah, that's yeah, that's um, I that's like a buddy of mine. I I told him to put that up there so the matchmakers don't gotta call me. They they could just call him and he could just let me know. So I, I don't have a manager. Okay, okay. So, um, I'm gonna have to send you some info there, man. Have you ever heard of Adrian Clark? No, nah, I never heard of him. <laughs> Uh, well, he, he's pretty good and respected, and he's back in the game. Um, you know, he had guys like, uh, I think it's James De La Rosa, got him big fights. If you check out his resume, any big fights you see, he got him all those. Jerry Belmontes, he just got... Um, Brian Norman, the top rank deal. He just got Brian Norman, the top rank and deal. He got Giovanni shit, Cabrera, the top had, rank uh, deal. He had got Earl, the Miguel Cotto fight. Yeah, obviously. Earl just didn't take it because obviously it would have meant he had to sign the Golden Boy, but there was a sit-down for uh, Earl to take that Cotto fight. He didn't take it, so Saddam Ali took it. So Adrian was a manager back then. Now he's got a new company. Have you ever heard of uh, Main Events? Cassie yeah, yeah. So Joey Mazzone left main events and is with Adrian now, and they formed the management company. So I'll give you the information. I don't know if they'll be interested, obviously. That's between you and them, but, you know, I rock with you and your team, so, you know, we want to see the best for you. Um, so so, so now that you don't have a manager, what? how are you moving? I, I'm, I'm going to let you know. So um, after the Tyler Howard fight, they had offered me uh to fight some guy um on a Don King card, right? Mm. Damn. Um, Let me ask you, stop you right there and ask you, when when you get the call for a Don King card, what's your first impression? What's my, what's the first thing goes through your mind? At the time, I didn't even know he was still promoting. Like <laughs> I, I didn't know, but I was, I was, he was excited. With it. Hell yeah, that's the yeah, legend. Like yeah. you know. Um, you gotta I, be I, careful. You gotta be careful. You know what I'm saying? I forgot the dude's name. Uh, 
I think he was on a contender. Um, they wanted me to fight him, and he didn't want to fight. So Alfonso Gomez? No, 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 no. No, 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 no. This was the new, the, the new last. One. Brandon. Oh the, oh, the new one. So let's see, Brandon Adams, oh, Sugar Shane Mosley Jr. I, I, nah, oh. it gotta be Marco Hernandez, Madman. More. Michael Moore. Moore. Okay, okay. He made it to the finals. No, he yeah. didn't. I yeah, thought, yeah. That's the that was the aggressive guy I in the thought, show. I thought the final was Shane Mosley Jr. versus Brandon Adams. Yeah, but I mean, Moore had to lose to one of them. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah so, I know him. He was the dark skin dude. He was real aggressive. He was acting like a bully in the show. Yeah, they had they had over me him. So I'm like, I'm with it, like you know. But he ain't, he ain't want to fight. Mm. So, and it was for like a WBA belt, and um, they like, all right, well, fuck, like you don't want to be on the card, you don't want to fight him. Then we'll make him, we'll put him on the card. So, I'm not gonna lie, Don had put like a nice contract together for me. And he like offered me a promotional agreement. And then at the time, like, it's like, yo, do you still wait for these calls and take these beats? Because it's risky. Like I, the Tyler Howard fight, I had to make sure I won every round. Like I don't, at, like I couldn't. If it was five three, that it would have been a draw. Like if it, you know, I had to make sure I won all the rounds. And like going into the fight, it's hard to go into the fight thinking like, damn, I gotta get a knockout. Or you want to be kind of. Like you want to know you on on an even playing field, so so when he had offered me the contract, I was just thinking like I was weighing the pros and cons. I'm like, yo, like you want to keep like coming in on the B side and taking these risks, or at least you'll have somebody behind you, and that's going you know, and and you're gonna actually be more active. You're gonna get fights, and they're gonna put you in position. So like I decided to rock with Don because he like wanted to rock with me. So Don King. I, yeah, Don King. And he, you signed with him? Yeah. Oh shit. How many fights? Um, it's 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 a I got two years left. So, but look, check this out. So far, I, like I said, I got two fights with him. He I'm he paying me well. And I'm I'm ranked now I'm ranked seven in the WBA. So so far, like everything he said he was gonna do, he's doing. So I don't really got no issues. I mean, except that you're only fighting once a year, champ. Nah, I'm look. I fought Jenny. I just fought like two weeks ago. I'm gonna fight like two or three more times this year for sure. Yo, does Don, I ain't and again, Sam. You know, we just want the best, but now I don't know funny shit. You know, mm -hmm. but uh, is Don even doing two, three shows a year? Like, yeah. but like, you know, it's you. It's always cross promotion. Like, like sure. I said, I mean, yeah, he it, got don't. Yeah, he got he connections. Got, he could put you on other people's don't, cards. Don't he got Macabre? Macabu, he do got Mac Macabu. Macabu about a fight under Jake Paul. He but that's all the way in Saudi. Yeah. Did they offer you anything in Saudi Arabia? Because his fight of the WBC Cruiserweight is fighting out there versus Badu Jack. Not yet. But look, think about what he did with, uh, what's his name? Trevor Mary Bryant. Oh, uh, Trevor Bryant, he got him He got him a strap. And he, I think he got paid like 1.6 for that fight. Get the fuck for the, for the Dubois fight? Look look it up. Wow. Wait, wait think about... um. Remember a Mary Mom? He fought yeah. Ramirez, WBC strap, uh, top rank. Um, but on yeah, the flip but, side, champ. But, on the flip side, champ. He also had Yildirim, and Yildirim took like four fucking years to take his shot. I got a video with Yildirim, like in 2018, talking about David Benavides. Yeah, that was with me. I'm, we went to Florida. I'm gonna fuck you up. My guy ain't even know what he was saying, bro. And he ain't get his shot uh, to Canelo till 2021. I was four years. Yeah, but later. The, I think that was politics though, because that was the whole WBC wait in line shit. Remember, he had got that cut. I don't in the Darrell fight, I, and I think that's what that's what that's what the right, whole right. thing came yeah, about. Yeah, but even that took a while. But I do want to say Amir Iman always had Peter Khan, and that's a great manager. Like, it's always good to have a good promoter, but the manager, he doing shit, man. Like, he making sure you in the right position. And Amir Iman did always have uh, Peter Khan, man, who look what he did um, for Franchon Cruz, made it undisputed. Look what he did for uh, Cambosos, made him damn near undisputed. He needed that one belt, couldn't get it from Haney. You know, um, Peter Khan, he's all right. Look, he just had that kid 
on, on, on Matchroom with two fights, one fight in fucking Venezuela and one in Colombia. All of a sudden, he in America on a fucking... And he took TV time from 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 our girl. They put that little dude, yeah, 105 did, pounds, instead of Shadeja Green. But whatever, which brings me to, your name is Green, too. Are y'all somehow related and I didn't know? Nah, nah, we oh, not okay. related. Greens from Patterson. Shout out oh. to her. Like. Two Greens from Patterson trained with the same trainer. What is the fucking probability of that? That's crazy. How big is Patterson? Nah, it's, it's pretty big, oh. man. I uh, mean, I Patterson. feel like it's, it's, it's not that. I mean, but I'm from Jersey, you feel me? So nah, I, it's, like, Nork is way bigger than Patterson. Like, really? Patterson. Yeah, Patterson. The only reason I'm asking. Remember, I'm Dominican, so when I go to Patterson, I was going to a certain section. You was going with the poppies B. Over where the poppies B, man. <laughs> Yo, it's really like that. It's like Patterson segregated. It's word. Yo, you know, it's man. funny. It's, it's funny though, because I was go ahead. No, nah, that's what I was saying. Like it's it's really just a Spanish section in Patterson and it's it's a black area. It's like Yo, it's, no, I, I was telling him the first time I was out in Newark, I'm like, yo, this shit is crazy. This shit like the crib. Like I'm from Chicago. Chicago segregated as fuck. But he had me with a poppies being Newark. But see, we ain't got Dominicans in the city. We got Mexicans and Puerto Ricans as far that's as far as the Spanish go. So I'm out there and I'm thinking I'm I'm in the hood. I'm thinking I'm in a black neighborhood. And then, you know, I see a beautiful black young lady walk by, don't speak a lick of English. She's <laughs> Colombian, Dominican, some other shit. I'm just like, whoa. It was different Yo, for me. Yo, Patterson is dope, too. Like, women-wise. I feel like... Patterson and Passaic. I feel like... It's, it's some bars it's, over there? Hell yeah, I, some bars and some, some spots over the, there. I know you took me to, like, definitely some Spanish bars, a little Brazilian spot. You know. oh, I took you to Patterson? I, oh, we definitely went to the palace. <laughs> I feel, bro, I feel, man, you took me to like five or six bars. When, okay. So I feel like we went to Patterson for sure. We definitely went to the Patterson, Ian. <laughs> when the last time you been at the Palace? You a fighter? Nah, nah. I don't, I don't That's right. Stay away from the Palace. What's the Palace, Ian? Tell us. Strip What's the club, Palace? Strip oh, okay. club. I'm locked in. Like, I'm, I'm, I really want straps. Like, like, like I said, like I said before, like I ain't. It's not like I said. Remember, I said back then I was fighting for me. Mm -hmm. Right now, about me. Like I got, like I got a family. I got kids, and on top of that, like, let's say, right? Like, I, like I said, when I got that phone call, I was, like I said, I was done. I was depressed. But every day, somebody get that call. Like whether it's a, a, a mother, a brother, somebody losing their mother, their brother, their son. Somebody get that call every day, mm -hmm. and like That's if they deep. could. If they could cut the TV on, right, and then they see like, oh, this kid was in the same position as me, and then on top of that, he became a world champion. You know what? Let me get up, and let me like they they it stopped them from pulling that trigger, like, like, cause you had them thoughts. It stopped them from taking all the pills to just to, like, you had them thoughts. Like mental health, I, like I'm a I'm a mental health advocate for real. Like I I never knew the severity of it until. Like I, I was dealing with what I was dealing with, but it's like it's like you like you burnt like it's like you you can't run from the pain. It's it's all in you, you know. But going back to what I was saying, if, if somebody could cut the TV on and just see, like, ah oh, man, this guy's a world champion and he and he was able to make it out of with like his circumstances, then I could do it too, you know. So like I ain't just fighting for me. I'm fighting for all of those people and I'm fighting for my family. Like I'm from the trenches, like. Like, you know, Section 8, you know, I'm sure you know what that is. Like, heating up the house with the stove. That's that's where I come from. So, I'm trying, I'm, I'm really, I'm, that's not, it's not like that no more. But I'm just saying, like, I'm I'm from, I'm. that's the type of stuff that I, I grew up, I grew up with. And I'm, I'm trying, I'm changing that. It's over. Like I'm, A lot of people not, don't know about opening the fucking stove to warm your house up, champ. They don't I, know about that I, shit. Oh, but, like I said, bro, like, I'm... Like if you if you sign in that contract to fight me, I'm telling you, don't let them. I'm losses. They fooled a lot of motherfuckers, bro. That's it's, it's a wrap for that, bro. I'm not losing, and that's and that's not everything. Ain't no, Chan, ain't no, ain't no. I know you're gonna say yes to this, but you know, just to put it out there so that the powers that be listening can get these offers to you. Rayota Marota, former WBA champ. If they call yeah. you, would you go to Japan for him? Yes. How many was, weeks do you need since they like calling you short notice? How much is too short and how much is just right? 
Obviously, yeah, perfect time in his eight weeks. We know that. But hypothetically, they ain't giving you eight weeks. Like you said, high risk, low reward. Fuck it. Let's let's call him with less time. How much is that time? Like, like Floyd said, give me six weeks and I got him. Okay. Period. Give me six weeks and I got him. Like, I, like I'm, I'm always in some shape. Like, I'm always in the gym. I just fought two weeks ago. I'm in the gym. Like, I'm, 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 I'm training. Like, you know, I'm always in some shape. But it's a difference between being in shape and then being in fight shape. I just keep, I just keep myself in shape so I could get in fight shape, like rather quickly. But um, sure, give me like six weeks, and yeah, I'll definitely take that fight. I'll fight anybody. I'm and I'm gonna win. Like I, I feel like it ain't no middleweight that could that got the box. I could box. I could outbox you. I could. I could. We could fight. We could bang. Like I, could, I really could do it all. I got a lot of tools in my arsenal. Like I've been in the ring with a lot of great fighters. Like, like, and that's another thing people don't know. Like I, I, I was in camp with with Julian Williams. The Julian Williams that beat Jared Hurt. He's sharp. Like he's a great fighter. He's. I feel like he's underrated too. But he's he's a real good fighter. You know, um, I've been in the ring with arguably the best fighter in the world, Terrence Crawford. I was in camp with him. Like, I got experience. Um, How many prime. weeks you was with Crawford? I was there for, like, like two weeks. Okay. So what, Monday, okay. Wednesday, Friday sparring? Yeah, them five-minute rounds. I'm, whew, and, five and minutes? I thought it was four. No, no. Nah, we was doing five-minute rounds. And, Damn, and, how was that first round? Because I'm sure that probably was your first time going five. Like, yo, did yo, you have to trick yourself mentally? Let, like, yo, I'm not tired. Let me tell you, my that was my first time in Colorado. When I got there, whoa, yo, th whoa, that's that's harsh. I ain't gonna yeah, lie. you couldn't breathe then, huh? Bro, then no, no, no. Let me tell you, Colorado Springs, bro. The moment you land, you get off the plane. You, the bro, the airport. You're not even going inside. You get off. You on the mountains, right? That air, bro. It's like it's like you know that the real good weed that when you hit it, it almost feel like you ain't hitting it. That's how it feel, bro. Like you ain't breathing. It's like <sighs> to go. I, I was sleeping. That the all right. So when I got there, when I went to sleep that night. I couldn't sleep because I I couldn't breathe. I'm like, yo, this this shit is really different out here. For real? <laughs> nah, you ain't lying. Damn, for real, bro. That high elevation, that ain't nothing to play with. It so it different. took you how many days to get acclimated, champ? Like it took me like a good like a like a good five days. Five shit. Days. So you had to spar that first week out of mm -hmm. breath, basically. So I got there on a on a Tuesday, so I was I sparred that Wednesday and Friday. And then by the time Monday came, I was I was I was good. But yeah, it was a little rough. Shakur, but Shakur, Shakur was out there. He was helping me. He was helping me out a little bit. He was in my corner because I ain't my trainer couldn't come, so I was out there by myself. How was, was Shakur help. helping you? What like corner he man just, help? Yeah, corner man help. Like you know, like corner man help type shit. That's what's but, up, man. We we was just with Shakur in Houston. He's a great guy. Yeah. So y'all yeah, knew yeah. each other already? Because I know you in Patterson, he's in North. No, no, no. I used to train like in his gym in okay. North. I was from Patterson, I I shoot to the gym. The one on one pleasant? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I was shit. In the... Okay, you was right by the hood. That's a uh, Broadway right there. <laughs> so I knew him for a while, like he here like cool kid, like real motivational. Like that motive like what he doing is motivating to us too, so um, but going back to what I was saying, like yeah, like I said, I was in the ring with, with Bud, um, like Prime Glenn, Prime Glenn, uh, and Glenn even Tapia, like the, you mean? Yeah, Glenn Tapia, even the up and coming guys, like um, I did some rounds with Sergey. He's he's a great fighter, you know, tough fighter. Uh, Berlanga, I did, did some rounds with him, good fighter, and I even got I even got it in with us. Uh, uh, Richardson got a couple rounds in with him like probably a couple months ago. Great 140 fighter, Richardson. Yeah, yeah sharp how fighters. was that jab? Because boy, he was he looked so sharp this weekend. Had a good jab, he's sharp. Like, he, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan, I like him. He's sharp, too. so um, like I said, like I've been there, and, and and that's that's just the guys you guys know now. The guys that you guys really don't know, they're a beast that I'll be in the ring with. Like, all right, y'all know Shadeja, like. I know hot like, too. I'm waiting for you to talk about hot because he's a, 
He, I mean, the, the worst problem with Hawk is he's getting older, man. They ain't giving him his shot. He getting older, but, man, he is a gym legend to me. Hey, yo, first thing first, though, Shadeja, she hit like a man. Like, that old... You ain't got to tell me, champ. She hit me with that double left hook to the body. I was done. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to ask you. You weren't there when she put Ness nah, on his Nah, ass? nah, nah, nah. Oh, he wasn't there. Oh. And she didn't put me down. I ran around the ring not to go down, Oh, bro. and then you jumped out the ring. That's right. I mean, you know, you got to do what you got to do. It really got me. Like, she, you you want to know something? She don't, you know how they say, she, like, like, oh, nah, she hit hard for a female. If she was a dude, she hit hard. Like, she got good power, like, for real. But, um... Like shout out to her. Like she she um helps me out like in camp. Like that that she won't be she not my main sparring partner or nothing, but they'll throw her in like in the middle or the back end when I'm a little tired and I still got me on point because you know. She's and um yeah, word. And uh like I, I it's this one fifty four pounder I train with his name his name is DJ. Like he he's sharp as a knife. He young, he he like nineteen, twenty. He he he's next up for real. People really don't know much about him, but y'all gonna know soon. Like he's a beast, so watch out for him. And you know, hot. What's his last know. name? DJ what? Uh, his name Dwight Flemings. Okay. That's, that's my. He a beast. Like he, he any up and coming fighter, he smoke him at at one fifty four, one sixty. He smoke him. I'm telling you that right now. Like all them top ranked fighters, he smoke him. Mm. And also hot, y'all y'all. I, they, I, I be, I spar him a lot for fights, you know. He's, he's tough. And then, uh, you know, let me ask you because I thought Hot could beat Devon Lee. I think it was like a year ago or two years ago. I had got him that fight, and mm -hmm. he ain't take it. Obviously, you know Hot. You know Hot has his inconsistencies because he, he dealing with a lot of shit. You know, mm. uh, so he wasn't really in the gym. They ain't take it, but. I'm I'm assuming you think Hot could beat fucking Devon Lee, right? Out of ten, it was something going on out, outside of it. Like he probably wasn't in shape or something like that. But nah, he, he definitely definitely could beat him. That's what he needed, man. That that a win over Devon would have put him on the map. You Yo. know what I mean? People would know him now. Yeah. I'll, I'll, he like ten now. If I'm not what? mistaken, I think he's like ten and zero right now. He's gonna get a fight. He's gonna get a good fight soon. I'll, um, I'll, I wanted to ask because we're talking about obviously a lot of young talent and just talent in general out of that Jersey area. Um, I know you've probably been able to see him more than we have, but yo, I got to bring him up because I think the world of him already. Little Manny Chance. Oh yeah, Rajan yeah, oh. brother. He know Rajan. They train in yeah, the same yeah, gym. Yeah, I know he know Rajan. That's why I know he know Manny. Nah, Manny. He he really like he different. I know y'all hear that all the time. He really different. Like, he different for real. And then Rajan, his brother. He slept on. He 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 sharp. Like watch out for him. He sharp. I spar him too. Like you know, he he sharp. And um, I want to bring up uh another fighter. His name Norman Neely. Like he a heavyweight. Yeah. Like, I, and I, I spar like I spar middleweights, and and I spar him like a heavyweight. He just as fast as a middleweight. Like he really a beast. Watch out for that guy. Like he, he, he's something special for real. Like he, he, he different. So, like, I, like I got a lot he of. He suffered good... a loss though, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. His last fight, it was he. You know, he got caught with a, a shot, but he. I feel like that's going. He, he was kind of putting the. He kind of putting the position I was in, and. What, I think late, it's late notice. What you mean, the position you? No, were no, in? no. Like, like when you lose, like they start, they sleep on you. You know, so. I feel like he gonna get a good fight, and he like he gonna catch somebody lacking. Like I believe. What did he say was the issue? Because we know Rodell Booker very well, my man. And, and and again, if you supposed to be the goods, you ain't supposed to lose to a dude that been in prison ten years. Like Rodell, you know, he, Rodell's was, durable. Rodell's durable. We just made money on him because I told people he was not gonna get knocked out after that fight, so we made money on him. But he's still not oh. youthful. You know Norman did eight in prison, right? Get the oh no, I didn't. I didn't. Yeah. yeah. He so he he went to jail when he was younger, but he like before he went to jail, he was doing this thing in the amateurs. But he he did time and he came home. He and he got back to his career. You feel me? He got you know. But um, I I mean, he, I'm sure he'll be up here soon, so he could explain to y'all like. Well, he, I really don't know like the details of what happened, but I just know he got caught with a good shot. But like I said, that. He gonna, I know him. Like he, he gonna bounce back stronger, and he really a problem for real. It's just 
you know, it's boxing shit. Like shit happens. So Yeah. So, um but like 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 I said, like I'm around a bunch of studs. Like I'm around a bunch of studs that's gonna get me better. And it's a lot of good work around Jersey. Even I'm beginning working with me and Khalil Cole, we beginning it from time to time. Like I love Khalil Cole. Yeah, so like I said, it's it's a lot of good work and it, like I said, bro, these middle ways, they can't fuck with me. Period. They they not ain't nobody fucking with me now, bro. I'm 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 back and I'm better. And like I said, I'm willing to fight whoever, period. So you I'm very with- highly ranked in that WBA. Um would you be willing to take that Sergio Martinez fight? I know he's 47 and people like, yo, he ain't supposed to be boxing, but this dude is ranked like number two. I mean, I'll take that with of course, he a legend. I would love to add him to my resume. Yeah, that's that's the all right. That's those are the fights I want. Like now, all right. Like I get it. Uh-oh. Like I, right, I respect. You got a it. call. Okay. Did you get a call, champ? Um, now nah, you can hear me. I'm good. I lost you. Call back. Damn, we had Ian Green on. We gonna get him back on. Yo, that was a wonderful interview thus far. Definitely, uh, you know, thankful to have Ian and uh, yo. I'm, Somebody who uh, I just learned about and uh, getting to know, but great story thus far, bro. Give us a sec here to see can we connect with him. And I uh, just want to remind everybody else who is tuned in, smash that like button. Make sure you are subscribed as we are trying to reach that next goal of 165,000. We're really close. Uh, let's hope we got him back. Norman, you there? Shit, I mean, Yo. Ian, you there? Yeah, I'm here. You, you, you yeah, hear me? Yeah, we got you. We got I'm you. Good. Yeah. Sorry what was, about that. I don't what know. was I saying? I, uh, well, we were definitely talking about Sergio taking that opportunity. Oh, yeah. So, like I said, those are the fights I want. Like, I want contenders. Like, like don't get me wrong. Like, I respect the game. We know when you lose... They look at you like you're a gatekeeper. You know, I respect it. But I feel like I proved that I ain't no it's a it's a rap for that. Like I want the I I just fought another my last fight was get some undefeated kid, you know? Like now I want the contenders. I want the guys that's ranked above me. Like I wanna fight those guys. So him, um any any of the top names, yes, of course. I'll take that with open arms. It's no fight that you're gonna ask me that I'm gonna say no to. Like any of them fights I'm taking, bro, and I'm I'm gonna win. Well, uh, I mean, those are all of our questions, but uh, I am gonna connect you with some people because you know I think you got opportunities on the matchroom side. Be truthful, like Felix Cash, you know he gonna want your ranking. He's below you. He's with matchroom. Ammo's still over there, but Ammo's above him. So if he can't get nothing big, well, maybe they look I, back. I mentioned Ammo because you mentioned Felix Cash, and that's the name that is being. Felix thrown Cash around. ain't taking it though. Okay, so yeah, he been that so, that been off the table. From I mean, Rob let us know in the pre pro, but pretty sure Felix Cash Ammo been off the table. They did all that hyping for nothing. I thought that was just his most recent fight, or has he fought since? Who Ammo? I thought they, he didn't fight Cash. No, but he took. They took him out there, and I thought they had him on the same. Yeah, bill. that's what I'm saying. They built it up when Cash was fighting. He was there. They played. <laughs> they played Ammo out on TV, and then the fight ain't happening. Yeah. So who's Felix fighting? No clue, brother. I could check for oh, you, okay. but no, no, uh, I mean, I really don't care. I just you mentioned one guy. I I heard the other guy's name. I ain't never even seen Felix Cash. I just know that they was trying to set him up for ammo. Nah, I'll fight. Well, I'll fight any of those guys. You know, I, I want to fight those type of guys. So you think Tom wanna... Frank brings you back for Xander? You think you get a Xander shot? Xander's already at sixty. I mean, you know, Xander's fifty four, bro. Uh, Unless they gonna move him up or offer you to fight, you know. <laughs> For you to I kill yourself, I thought he was at sixty, but if he had fifty four, never mind. He, uh, he is he at fifty four. He's a great fighter. But he, he a kid, like he. I don't think they. No, I, I like I said. I want. I want to fight guys that's getting close to a world title, like ex world champions, or that's like at the door of a title shot. Like I'm. 
I'm really focused on like you know fights like that. Has there ever been a talk, rumor, offer for Danny Garcia? Because he wants to test himself at middleweight. He been talking about fighting Laura, and he's ranked one slot below you. That'll be your biggest fight ever, and it'll be. Technically, on paper, easier because Danny is a, a welterweight move. Well, actually, 140 moving up. I'm not gonna lie, I love that fight, but nah, it was. I never, I never got a call about that. But I take that like I take that with open arms. Like I, like I said, bro, it's, it's no fight in this world that I won't take. Like if they call me to fight Triple G, I'm taking it. And a lot of people uh, would think that uh, I lose, but y'all can win some money that night. Mm. That's all I'm. Saying. Well, champ, that is... Let me double check. I think we might have a post from the people before we let you go. But let everybody know your social media in the meantime. You can follow me on Instagram at About Green with two Ts. So just About Green with two Ts. Twitter and Green Boxing. And that's it, really. And, um, yeah, and I also want to just give my trainers their flowers. Uh, uh, my trainer, Dwight Flemings. You know, we've been together for a while, and... Like he has been a lot of ups and downs, but like you wait, know, wait, wait, wait. So Dwight has a son? Cause you just said Dwight Fleming we need to look out for, and now you're saying Dwight Fleming is your trainer. So is it the same person or a father son? The son. So DJ, that's Dwight Jr. That's why I call him DJ. And then Dwight Fleming is his father. So that he's he's our trainer. So you know, um, just wanted to shout him out. I wanted to shout out terrific. You know. Uh, like, ever since we, we clicked back up, man, it's been nothing but, like, success. And I want to shout out my cut lady for my last fight, uh, Veronica. Um, I got headbutt in the first Shut round. Up. I said, I, sh I showed you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't know she was a, I, I, I know she used to do strength and conditioning for y'all. She cut women now, too? Yo, bro, she, and she a beast. If you, I, if you look at, I don't know if y'all can show my Instagram, but if y'all can show, if you yeah. go on my Instagram, Go to my last picture and then like swipe over like like three pictures. Look at the cut I suffered in the first round of my fight. She took care of that shit for me, yo. So I wanted to give her a shout out too. Oh shit. Yeah, let me screen share this. T minus now. Okay. Yeah. So, so so you kept your composure with all that blood, champ. Damn, you lucky they ain't stop it because it looked like the cut was under. The eyelid, right? Or above, or on the eyelid? It was above, but it was like literally going inside my eye. It was it was everywhere. But nah, she she did her thing with it, and it happened in the first round. Like it happened like as soon as the fight started. So like it was kind of the fight was kind of tougher than what it should have been. But like I said, was hey, this um a headbutt or a punch? I was a headbutt. I if you look in your DM. I said, I'm here to show that I ain't. I'm sorry, I'm just going through all the um, slides. Now this but I, I didn't know they was all they all video. Yeah, well, um, nah. I, I, if you check our DMs together, mm -hmm. I sent to the head, but the video of the head, but oh, I don't know if. You let me go to that. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go to it. Danny, double check Patreon or, or hit up uh Brandon. All right. While I get this video, one sec. I got it. Right. It's like the first second of the video, like you can see it. Like. Oh, he, he tried to get a little flurry on you. So, yeah, I wanted to give her a shout out because that it was that was a bad cut. So she she did her thing with that, and you know. So does um, she help you with strength and conditioning too? Because I seen her, you know, she she usually does that with her daughter and with with, with Shadeja and Rajan, from what I remember. But I've been going from the city for like four years now. Yeah, so now she helps me with strength and conditioning. And, oh, I want to shout out this another fighter. His name his name Tank. He from he from Pat he from Patterson also and. He about to turn pro. He he's a beast. Nobody really don't know much about him, but y'all gotta watch out for him. His name Gregory Price. He, he a beast. He on IG. He, yeah yeah yeah. Um, 
I don't know. That, uh, send it to me in the DM after the interview. Okay, cool, cool, cool. But yeah, um, he just wanted to shout my team out, and I just wanted to let people know, like, no matter what you're going through in life, like, it's you could you could get through it. You just got to put that first step forward, you know. And like, it's not, it's not always, it's not always a breakdown. It could be a breakthrough. So. Just, just keep your head up and just keep pushing. Cause let me ask you: Is there any connection to your relationship with Paul and Stephen Nelson? Like, did you meet Paul through Stephen, or did you already know Paul? Cause I know Stephen Nelson works with Paul. No, nah, no, nah, I knew Paul from when I first turned pro. Paul been rock even P PG Sports. Shout out to Paul. He been rocking with me. Even after, even during that three-year layoff, he was always was rocking with me, checking on me, making sure I was good. Like, nah, I, I knew Paul since I turned pro. Um, Paul, Paul, my guy. But nah, I don't know. Nah, I ain't, I don't know Steven or nothing like that. I don't so really you ain't even see Steven at the Crawford camp. He's that 168 pounder that just fought on Black Prom. Uh, he's with Crawford. I don't know him personally, but yeah, I saw him at the camp. He was in the camp, but I don't know him personally. I really was like, I went there by myself. Wasn't really, I just came for business. I, I met the kid, Jamonte Clark. He a, he a cool kid. And, um, cause he was out there in Kent with us too. And, uh, Bubakar from, they both from Cincinnati, Ohio. I met, I was kicking it with those guys, but I went out there by myself. Just like, I just but went there for I, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out, did you get work with that 68 pounder since y'all so close in weight? Oh, no, no, no. It was just straight, I was just there yeah, strictly for Bud. Bad. Shout out! I mean, it don't get no better than Bud, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. shout out for Bud. Shout out to Bud for for them, like you know, flying me out there, giving me the experience, cause that that leveled me up like crazy. Um, did you ask out, to come back, or did you leave it up to them? You know what? Uh, Bo Mac told me like, yo, we ever fight Keith or somebody, I, like Keith Thurman, we'll bring you back. Mm. So I'm like, all right. And I wanted to shout out. Uh, and you, you, brand man, Julian Williams trainer, he made him and him and my trainer, Dwight, they made that happen for me. So shout out to brand man and shout out to J-Rock too, like for bringing me to his camp. And I was, you know, getting good work in with him too. So no work with Boots, because I know Shadeja worked with Boots and, and, and obviously uh, Hakeem has always worked with Julian. So they go to Philly a lot. Y'all ever uh, not yet? Ever since I've been with T, we, like we ain't go to Philly yet. So nah, no work with Boots. Okay. Okay, well, uh, Mr. Green, Ian Green, thank you for uh, joining us. You can find Ian Green on Instagram by searching about Green. And uh, we appreciate you, man. We're going to be locked in and, uh, you know, following your career. The minute you get any news, hit us up. We'll bring you right back on, man, to announce it. All right, no problem, no problem. Thank y'all for having me, bro. I appreciate it. Thank you, brother. Keep doing your thing, man. Thank and and, and sure. I appreciate... Keep pushing, man. Exactly. Uh, I appreciate that you didn't give up, man. And uh, not just that, bro, but that you telling your story because a lot of people... Uh, will get inspired. Not just inspired, bro, but they can definitely relate, man. Um, you know, everything you said as far as uh, the type of business this is and the type of sport it is, how lonely things can get. And how just, difficult, man, and just, it is. And just the real world, bro. Like, at the end of the day, you get what I'm saying? Uh, just the world the boxing world that we live in so uh definitely appreciate appreciate the inspiring story and keep pushing yeah and just to like just to say one more thing i went like i went from fighting in, in the middle of nowhere in mexico a bar a bar in mexico then i remember one like i remember like a year later i'm in i'm in las vegas the day before canelo fight in espn like Stuff could change, you know. You just really just gotta like just believe in yourself and and take the risk. But things change, so I went from that to now. I'm in. I'm putting myself in position. So at where I, I was at a place where people thought it was over for me, but I, I believed in myself and I, I invested in myself. I went from doing that to now. I'm I'm making good money and I'm I'm putting myself in position. I'm number seven in the world. So let's go. From Appreciate it. To being seven in the world. Appreciate you, champ. Uh, can't wait to get you back on, man. I appreciate you guys, bro. All right, take it easy. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen, contender.
Ian Green. Those are part of these uh, beautiful stories in boxing. Man. What up, YouTube family? Don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Help us get to that million subscribers. We're on the road to a million. And obviously, we have other great content on our Patreon channel. So since this video is over, head on over to our Patreon and check out all the exclusive content or right here on our YouTube members.